We are going to go through how to heat a reaction on a magnetic hot plate. For this, we are going to need a magnetic hot plate, a 100ml round bottom flask, a magnetic stirrer, a condenser, oil bath, sand bath, temperature probe or thermometer, heating block. We have our stirrer hot plate and we have our flask containing the reaction mixture we want to heat with a magnetic stirrer. There are a few vessels we can use for heating. Probably one of the easiest to get hold of is an oil bath. Ideally, there should be a magnetic stir bar or a large paper clip at the bottom of the oil bath. This will stir the oil, helping to achieve an even distribution of heat. We will place our oil bath underneath the flask and then we will carefully lower our flask into the bath. Take note, we are not heating at this stage. We can now start stirring the mixture. It is best to ensure the solvent level in the flask is lower than the height of the oil to ensure the whole reaction mixture is being heated. Next, we can plug our temperature probe into the stirrer hot plate. Or, if you have a more basic setup, you can use a glass thermometer. Place the probe or thermometer in the oil bath. If using a probe, do not clamp the metal parts of the probe as this could lead to false temperature readings and in some instances cause the temperature to keep rising higher than the set temperature. Finally, we will attach our condenser to the top of the flask. This is an air condenser, however you can use a water condenser. As the reaction heats up, the solvent will travel up the condenser and then condense back down into the reaction flask creating this evaporation condensation cycle. Next, we will turn on our hot plate and allow the reaction to heat. You should monitor the reaction and not leave the reaction unattended until it has reached temperature and the temperature has been maintained for one hour. That was how to heat up with an oil bath. Instead of the oil bath, we can use a sand bath. Sand baths are not efficient heaters like oil baths. The sand bath might not be uniformly warm like the liquid is. Similar to the oil bath, the sand bath is placed under the round bottom flask. The solvent level in the flask needs to be lower than the height of the sand when submerged. Again, we can begin heating. The final thing we can use is a heating block or a dry sin. A heating block directly conducts the heat. It is uniformly warm and you get different sizes to fit to your flask. When your reaction is complete, you must lift your flask up out of the heating block while it cools. Sometimes if you don't do this, as the heating block cools down, the metal constricts, tightening around your flask. In this short video, we have explored how to set up a heated reaction using an oil bath, a sand bath and a heating block.